Since the FBI has been keeping track, an estimated 1,600 people have vanished without a trace in the wilds and mountains of North America. One man, James Townsend, claims to know what happened to them, claiming he almost became one of the vanished. The story he told his family after the incident is terrifying to say the least. James refers to what he encountered as the Wechuge, saying they match descriptions of what the local Native American tribes describe them as. Wechuge translates into man-eating creature. Unlike how the ancient Native Americans described them, James said they've started becoming more intelligent over the last hundred years, which has made them more dangerous to humans. They've also learned how to stay hidden from people. This has led to the number of people vanishing more frequently, and it's increasing at an alarming rate every year. This is his story. People have been disappearing all over the planet for centuries, but we've only been keeping track of the numbers in North America over the last 50 years or so, at least when it comes to people venturing into the wilds or mountains and never coming back. I'm referring to people completely vanishing, without a single trace of evidence left behind as to what happened. This also means no one knows exactly how many have actually vanished. It could be a hell of a lot more than what's been tracked, and it most likely is. The year was 1962, and I was just 17 years old at the time. I was born and raised in Quinn, South Dakota, which is close to the Badlands. We were extremely poor and it seemed like we never had food in the house, so my father would send me out every weekend to scavenge for food. I'll never forget that Saturday in July. It was extremely hot that day, as was the whole summer that particular year. Hotter than previous years for sure. Of course we didn't have a fan or a swamp cooler so we'd simply sweat all summer and have to drink copious amounts of water every day. When I'd go out scavenging, I'd take a jug of water and a few things to eat for lunch, if we had anything. That day was no different. I grabbed my water, a few essentials, and headed off to the Badlands. It was a 12 mile trek to where I'd go scavenging, so I always woke up around 5am so I could be back before supper. I remember it being quieter than usual as I walked along that dark, dirt road that would take me into the Badlands. Sometimes I'd get lucky and would run into some nice people driving by who would see how poor I was and would give me food to take home or some change to buy some food. That morning though, there wasn't a single soul to be heard or seen. It was as if everyone had left the planet. At least that's what it felt like. I felt an eeriness I'd never experienced before that day and I've never experienced again. When I made it to the Badlands, I started searching the area as I usually did, for wild growing vegetables or plants, and possibly some small mammals I could catch, or some fresh roadkill I'd occasionally find. I spent most of the day with no luck in finding much of anything. It wasn't until dusk that my day would take a sharp turn for the worst. As I was heading back home, hiking along the trail I always took, I could see the sun starting to set over the horizon. I was thinking I wouldn't be home until very late when suddenly something big and sharp pierced my lower back, sending me stumbling forward. I immediately fell to the ground on my knees. I looked down and could see what looked to be a long black shiny claw protruding from my stomach and out through my shirt. As I turned around to see what impelled me, I was quickly bludgeoned in the face, which knocked me out. The next thing I remember, I was being dragged along the ground by my leg. I tried getting a look at the thing that was dragging me, but my eyes were full of blood and everything was a blur. I tried wiping the blood from my eyes, but to no avail. By this time, it had gotten dark. So even if my eyes weren't filled with blood, I doubt I could have seen a thing that was dragging me. 
I'm not sure how long I was dragged along the ground, but my guess was about an hour or two. As it dragged me along the ground, my mind was screaming to fight back and free myself, but my body wouldn't obey my commands. My body was limp. After what seemed like forever, I suddenly felt it get colder and noticed it had gotten significantly darker. To me, this meant we'd entered a cave or cavern. The thing dragged me a little further before coming to an abrupt stop and letting go of my leg. I noticed there was a small fire not too far from me. I tried moving again, but my body wouldn't obey my commands. My mind worked fine, which made me wonder if I'd been drugged with something that stopped my muscles from working. As I laid there wondering what was going to happen next, the smell of rotting flesh hit my nose and I started dry heaving. The left side of my body hurt like hell as I dry heaved and remembered getting stabbed to the lower back and the claw protruding from my stomach. I blacked out a few minutes later and started having the most frightening dreams I have ever had. I was sitting next to a campfire, watching myself from across the fire, being hung upside down and skinned alive by some type of beast I could never have imagined. The thing was using a crudely made knife as it removed the skin from my body. I watched myself scream over and over in pain as life slipped away from my body. I noticed in my dream there were multiple other bodies around the campfire that were removed of their skins as well. I'm not sure how long I slept, but I was awoken to the sound of loud commotion. I could now move my head slightly and could see out of my blurry eyes, just enough to make out two dark figures that appeared to be fighting with each other. The fight went on for several minutes when suddenly one fell to the ground in a heap and the other grasped its neck and started thrashing around in a violent manner, like it was badly wounded. All I could think about as the tears streamed down my face was, I was next. I lay there for what seemed like an eternity before I finally started getting some movement back in my limbs. When I could finally move enough to sit up, I made sure I sat up very slowly and quietly. The fire had gone out, so it was very dark, and I wasn't sure if there were any more things around me. I decided I needed to remain still until sunrise, and hopefully it would light up enough wherever I was at. Sitting there waiting for the sun to rise were the longest hours of my life. That's when I was the most frightened, the uncertainty. When sunrise finally came, what I'd hoped for happened. It lit the cave just enough to be able to see. Unfortunately, my eyes were still somewhat blurry. As I stood up to leave, I looked around and could see the two dark figures lying on the ground along with several other bodies. I assumed the other bodies were what was giving off the smell of rotting flesh. I tried being as quiet as I could as I stumbled out of the cave, but I knew I had to hurry as fast as I could in case there were in fact more things in the cave. When I made it out of the cave, I took each step carefully. As I didn't know how high I was and I didn't want to fall off a cliff or tumble down a steep mountain. I felt my way along as best I could, being I could only make out shapes, but not any detail. I walked for hours and hours, going over several mountains and crossing several rivers, before finally coming to a dirt road. Once I hit the dirt road, I literally laid down in the middle of it and passed out from exhaustion. The next thing I remember was waking up in a hospital, being surrounded by several nurses and two doctors, and my eyesight was clear again. They were talking to me, trying to wake me up. The first thing they asked me when I became coherent was what my name was, so I told them. They then asked me what I was doing before being found on the dirt road, 
and how I got the massive wound in my lower back that went straight through me. They said I was very lucky as it had barely missed my kidney and stomach. I hesitated for a minute, deciding whether or not I should divulge the entire truth of what happened to me. In those seconds I decided it was best to keep it to myself, so I told them I was out scavenging for food and had gotten lost and fell on a log and a branch from the log impelled me. What shocked me the most was when they told me where I was. I was in White Clay, which is a city in Nebraska about 50 miles from the Badlands, from where I last was. They told me I'd been found in the Nebraska National Forest, which is about 17 miles from the Badlands. After hearing that, my ears started ringing from shock, and I tuned everyone out. I couldn't believe I'd ended up so far away from where I'd started. The hospital eventually got a hold of my parents, who had to hitch a ride from a friend to come pick me up, being my parents didn't have a car at the time. Of course, the first thing they asked me was what happened. Again, I lied to them at the time. I wasn't ready to tell anyone the truth yet. I wasn't even sure of what happened, and I wanted to get everything clear in my head before I breathed the word of it to anyone. It took a few weeks before everything went back to normal, and I decided to tell my parents the truth of what happened. I'm not even sure to this day they believe me, but I don't really care. Over time, the story of what happened to me spread around our town. A year later, a Native American tribal leader from one of the local Lakota tribes I'd always seen around town came up to me and said he wanted to speak to me about what had happened. I agreed, so he took me to the local diner and bought me lunch, and had me tell the story. He sat there intently listening, never looking shocked or surprised, as I laid out the entire story in detail. It wasn't until the end, and what he told me, that scared the hell out of me. He said, Young man, you're very lucky to be alive. What stabbed you from behind and dragged you to that cave was what we call the Weichuge. It means man-eating creature. They've been around for a long time. Stories of them taking young people from our tribes and eating them has been passed down from generation to generation. As time goes on, they seem to get smarter. Don't care if no one else believes you. I do, and so do my people. He then paid for my lunch, got up, and left without saying another word. I never ventured back into the Badlands after that experience, and don't think I ever will. For more scary horror stories, please subscribe.